Hello, my name is Till Rönneberg, and my colleagues and I investigate the body clock. And I will explain to you now why so many people in our society, actually two-thirds of our society, are woken up in the middle of their biological night. Our daily lives are controlled by three clocks. One is ticking away in our body. It's synchronized to the clock that is provided by the rotation of our Earth, which makes day and night, so that's the sun clock. And more recently in our history, we have added another clock, which is the social clock. Now, if we look at the social clock on the wall, and it tells us a certain time, and we now look at the internal time of an individual, it can be completely different. Body clocks are set by the sunlight and the darkness of the night. When we still were working outside, when we were farmers, we could look at the sun and we knew what time of day it was. And the body clock was also synchronized to exactly that sun time of day. Nowadays, our body clocks run differently because we don't see the sun anymore and we live inside. And that makes our body clocks go later and later and later. Take a late type. He falls asleep according to his body clock. But he has to wake up on a workday with the alarm clock, way before the body clock would have woken him. Now this difference between what the social clock wants us to do and what our body clock wants us to do, we call social jet lag. Now the sleep behavior of most people is very different on work days and on weekends. While during the work week they get too little sleep and are woken up by the alarm clock in the middle of their biological night, they sleep in on weekends in order to fill up their tanks with the sleep they need. When we look at the body clocks in all organisms on this globe, we find that it's the sun and the darkness that sets these clocks. The difference between the time of our night and darkness, the sun time, and the social time can be quite remarkable. Let's presume somebody has to get up at 6 o'clock to go to work. If this somebody works in Prague, he may get up with sunrise. Now, in the most western city of Europe, Santiago de Compostela, in northern Spain, this person has to get up one and a half hours before the sun rises. So there are huge differences in what our social clocks tell us and what actually sunrise and sunset tell us. By every longitude we travel from east to west in the time zone, the body clock becomes later by four minutes, and that's exactly the time that the sun takes to rise from one longitude to the next. Now we've seen that very few people in our population can actually live according to their body clock. They suffer from social jet lag. And living against one's body clock has consequences. Most people with social jet lag are more likely to be smokers. They are more likely to drink alcohol and people with social jet lag drink a lot of caffeine during the day. And now we've discovered another consequence of living against the body clock, and that is, if you are already a little chubby and not very thin, it is very likely that living against the body clock makes you even become obese. In view of all these consequences, it is really high time we do something against social jet lag.